Hello and welcome. Today we're working on bond amortization problems, the effective interest method and the straight line method. We're in chapter 14, long-term liabilities of intermediate accounting. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn and where we can help you finally learn financial literacy. We have eight different things we're going to show real quickly. We're going to do the price of the bond at a discount, the amortization and the journal entries for bonds sold at a discount, and then we'll do bonds sold at a premium, the amortization and the journal entries, and then we'll show you how to do a simple straight line amortizations with the journal entries. So let's get started. Number one is, if what if we have a bond sold at a discount? Remember, bonds are long-term debts issued by a company or a corporation. And we're going to do present value. We're going to assume you know how to do present value already. If you don't know how to do present value of a bond, then I'll put a link to my previous video. And so you can see, make sure you know how to do the, the calculations for present value, the price of the bond, and the bond yield. So here's our problem. We have the name of the company, $600,000 bond six years and it's going to be five percent semi-annual interest payments now we don't know the yield or yield to maturity the effective rate the market rate and here we don't know then the price or present value of the bond if we know one we can find the other one so we'll add one more item here what if the bond is sold to yield six percent well let's see what we have here the bond is sold to yield 6%, so we have periods per year is 2. The number of periods is going to be 6 years times 2, which is 12. The yield is going to be the interest rate, so that's 6%. We're going to use the 5% because that's the coupon rate. We're going to only use that for the payment. So 600,000 times 5% divided by 2 means we're going to pay every 6 months, we'll pay a $15,000 interest payment and the future value we're going to pay one large six hundred thousand dollar amount at the end so what is the present value or the price of the bond well there's a time value of money calculation present value we're going to take the rate which is six percent we need to divide it by the periods per year which is two the number of periods is going to be 12. the payment is the fifteen thousand future value is 600,000 and the type we don't really need this but it's at the end of the period the assumption is it's the end of the period we would not have to put a zero in but I put a zero in to make sure that you know what's going on so the answer is 570,138 now this is proper according to the time value of money rules but we don't need to show it as a negative so I'll put a negative in the preceding the formula so therefore we have the present value is 570,138. So if this 5% bond is sold at 570,000, uh, 570, it has a face amount of 600, it's sold for 570, then you get a 6% yield. So you can make this 5% bond pay you 6% by paying less. So let's look at the bond amortization. So here's the full amortization and we'll do it step by step here. What we're trying to do is amortize that discount of 29,862 over the 12 period. So let me erase this and get started. So all I've done is done period 0 through 12. I've put the dates. Let's assume the dates happen at the end of June and the end of December. So let's see what happens. The first interest payment is going to be $15,000. We're going to make this $15,000 payment. I'm going to make it an absolute here so I can copy it down. It's $15,000 every six months all the way to the end of the bond, which is December of 2025. So that's $180,000 of interest payments. Now the carrying amount of the bond is going to be that 570 that we had 570 138 so it starts at 570 138 and then over time it's going to grow to 600,000 so this number down here at the bottom is going to be 600,000 so we need to calculate the interest every six months because we essentially borrowed 570,000 and the interest on this is six percent annually 
divided into two semi-annual periods. Then we're going to take 6% divided by 2, and that's 3% is our interest rate. So we're going to take the preceding 570 times the 3%. I'm going to make the 3% absolute so I can copy that down all the way. And we have 17,104. So the interest is larger than the interest payment. If you have a bond discount, then that increases your interest payments. Uh, I'm sorry, increases your interest expense even though your payments stay the same. Because you've borrowed 570, you have to repay back the full 600,000. We'll see that in just a minute. So we're going to take the 17,000 minus the 15,000. So we're going to amortize 2104. So that means we'll take the 570,000 plus the 2104, and that's going to equal 572,242. Now we should be able to copy. We're going to do the same thing for the discount that's amortized. We'll do the same thing for the carrying value of the bond. Now this last number should equal 600,000 if we did it correctly. Yes, it does. Because this is dynamic, everything updates with formulas. So here's what we know. If you have a discount, you've paid 570, but you owe 600. These $15,000 interest payments add up to be 180,000, but you also have to pay the difference between the 570 and the 600,000. That's the discount of 29,862. So it adds a little bit more. So 180 plus 29 equals 209. So the actual interest expense is going to be 6%, not 5% or 209,862, not just 180,000. So how do we do the journal entries based on this? The reason why we do this is to show the journal entries. So the very first one, to issue the bond, we're going to take the 570,000. That's how much cash we've received. We owe 600,000. So we're going to debit. This needs to be a debit of 29,862. We need to debit 29,862 as our discount on bonds payable. So this is the entry to set up the issuance of the bond. Now, as we slowly amortize this discount, that will increase our interest expense. So the first interest payment date is going to be essentially this row right here. Interest expense is 17,000, interest uh, cash payment is 15,000, and the discount is 2104. So this is our entry, debit interest expense, credit discount on bonds payable 2104, and the cash is going to be 15,000 always. So a discount on bonds payable increases our interest because we've only borrowed 570 even though we uh, have to pay 600. Let's say you had a friend, you just, you just had to borrow $100 and you had to repay 120. Well, that's interest. That extra 20 is interest and that's what's happening here. The extra 29,000 is really interest. So the second interest payment is going to be interest expense and then credit discount on bonds payable and cash. So the interest expense is 17167. This number right here 17167 and we amortize 2167. All right, so that's how you do the amortization of a bond discount and the journal entry. So let's switch and let's do a premium. Let's assume that the bond is sold at a premium. Now what makes it sell at a premium? Well, the interest rate just has to be less than the 5%. So what if we made the interest 4.5%? What if we said the yield is 4.5%? Well, let me show you how to do this one. The only thing that changes is we do 4.5%. We're going to do present value, so PV. Start the parentheses. The rate is going to be 4.5%, but we need to divide it by 2 because it's semi-annual. Our number of periods is 12. Our payment is going to be the 15000 and our future value is 600000 The payments happen at the end of the period, so zero. So it's 615622 Now I'm going to make it positive, so I'll just make it a, a negative sign. The other way you can do this is make put the 
payment and the future value in is both negative and it makes your answer positive. I typically don't do that. I just make the, the final answer where it's positive because it's 615, 622. Um, you don't say, um, when you buy a bond, you don't say I paid a negative 615,000 for the bond or, or whatever. So you, it's, it's a, the price of the bond right now on, on the market when it was issued based on the yield. So let's do the bond premium amortization. All right, we already know how to do the interest payment all the way down. And the interest expense is going to be 4.5%, which is the yield, divided by 2. We already know how to do that. And I just started with the carrying amount of 615622 just like we did before. Well, how do we calculate the interest expense? We're going to take the previous 615 times the 2.25%. I'll make it absolute so I can copy it down. So that's 13851 Our premium that's amortized is going to be 15000 minus the 13851 So that's 1149 So the 615 minus the 1149 makes it go down. Now, since we're above 615, we're going to subtract because we're going to go all the way down to 600000 The final answer down here is going to be 600000 So I should be able to copy this down and then copy this down and also copy this down. I could do all those together but I want you to see these are all the same things and it's dynamically updating the formulas as you go along. So our total discount, I'm sorry, our total premium was 15622 and it goes down to 600,000. Even though we received 615, we only have to repay 600,000. So what are the entries? The very first entry is to receive the 615. We're going to debit cash for 615, 622. We have a premium on bonds payable of 15,622 and we owe 600,000 on bonds payable. So what about the first interest payment? The very first interest payment is going to be interest expense. Right here, here's our numbers. Uh, we have interest expense of $13,851. Premium bond bonds payable is $1,149. And then the cash is $15,000. The, since we're not paying back the extra $15,000, then the premium reduces our interest expense. We do the same thing for year two. Year two is going to be 13826 So here it is, interest expense, 13826 Premium on bonds payable, 1174 And we credit cash of 15000 So that's how you do amortization both for a discount and for a premium. Now let's switch and do one example for straight line. Straight line is just because it's easier to do and you can do the straight line method um, instead of doing the effective interest method. So let's do our problem. Let's go back to our very first example of a discount. The discount here started at 570000 is the carrying amount of the bond. So we know the discount was 29000 uh, That number, 29862 So let's calculate the, the discount amortized. We're going to take the 29862 divided by 12 periods and we end up with 2489 now, 24.89 actually is 24.88 and 50 cents. I'm showing whole numbers here. We don't have to do the uh, the decimals because Excel has it already in in its calculations. Now, if you're doing this by hand, don't just put in 24.89. You're going to have to carry it to two decimal places. So, what we're going to have is we're going to have 24.89 as our amortize discount, how much we amortize, and we're going to copy this all the way down. And that means our interest expense is going to be 15000 minus the 2489. We get 12511 We get that all the way down. And the carrying value of our bonds is going to be 570 plus the 2489. So that's 572000 and then carry that all the way down. It's repetitive all the way down to $600,000. Now here's the advantage of the straight line method. We can make this same entry 
12 different times. The numbers aren't very much different, so it's, it may not be material for most companies. And so the straight line method might be better than the effective interest method, even though the effective interest method is, is pretty precise. It's correct. So let's do the journal entries. The same journal entry as before, we have a debit cash of 570, 138. A debit to discount on bonds payable of 29,862. And our bonds payable, our debt is 600,000. So that's our first entry. That's the same as before. Now the advantage, like we said, is that all the journal entries here would be the same. So these two journal entries are the same. We debit the interest expense for 12,511. We credit the discount for $24.89 and we credit cash for $15,000. So one of the things that happens is if you have a discount on bonds payable, interest expense is higher. Now why do you have a, a discount? If your yield is greater than your coupon rate, you'll have a discount. So that means that your discount rate causes your interest expense to be higher. A premium causes your interest expense to be lower because a premium means you paid more for the bond. It's when your yield is less than the coupon rate on the bond. All right, thanks for watching. See you on the next video.